That's nothing. Not liking FF is not a sin. Hello everybody and welcome to the Filipino Free Thinkers podcast that's also a video. I'm Red. I'm Sharmila. And today we're talking about Catholic schools because school is... It's already starting. When is it? I mean, August, it's K- right? Yeah, August. So K to 12, yeah. you know, that new thing. So yeah. school starts around August nowadays. And what better time to talk about Catholic schools than now? And so what about Catholic schools are we talking about? We're free thinkers. <laughs> schools, so, yeah, do the math. Anyway, what's wrong with Catholic schools that gets you wild up so much? Let's, what's well, the first thing? Oh, especially in the context of the Philippines, most private schools are probably sectarian at the very least and so there's this fallacy of a choice we'd like to think parents choose to send their kids there Mm. and they sign up for everything that's involved but actually if you want a good education for your child you're practically like straight jacketed into sending your child to a catholic school at this point yeah or some variant thereof especially primary secondary like uh, public schools like few of them I don't know of any yeah. actually. So they're or monopoly to... over our private education system. <laughs> yeah. So it's kind. They're kind of the captive audience, yeah. the captive market yeah. for the secondary, or some some would say the primary, primary purpose of Catholic schools is not to give kids a good education, but to bring them closer to God. I mean, those two would probably mm. be the competing yeah. primary uh, purpose. I mean, they claim to do both. So yeah. they claim to be academic institutions. Yeah. They also claim to be uh, institutions where people can nurture their faith. Yeah. I think the difficult question here is what happens when those two goals are in tension? Exactly. What exactly. gets prioritized? If that's how you know what the priority yes. is. So if the education would clash yeah. with the religious indoctrination, yeah. like would the education stand? Or would would it be, you know, like, let's say, the case of evolution? Indeed, exactly. So right? evolution, like, intelligent design, or even... A, teaching against homosexuality. Mm. There's no academic basis for homophobia, Yeah. right? But then if you still continue with that, you are betraying your purpose as an academic institution. Yeah. So how do you negotiate these things? I think they've been negotiated incorrectly mm. <laughs> by many Catholic schools. Yeah, and Catholic schools, if, you, if you, you're the best school, the best institution, you would attract the best people too. Yeah. So yeah. the best teachers, I think, tend to be more progressive, I think. I think so too, I think right? so too, and, yeah. And you would have this conflict in you. And you know, uh, I, I know of a few who really want to implement <laughs> change. And yes. but they're just waiting for tenure. They're waiting, <laughs> they're waiting for tenure. Waiting more secure. So there's a disciplinary action against you, angry parent, angry co-teachers, yeah. angry administrators, right? Yeah. But yes, of course. And for these people, they're also conflicted. Like they feel like at least there is space for them to tip the needle a bit in, in within the Catholic school context, but they're still hamstrung by the restrictions. Yeah, so for free thinkers, yeah. I think there's a built-in prejudice against us, against yeah. especially atheists. Yes. You're taught very early on that the main value in life is really God. Yeah. Believing in God, loving God, Serving all, of, God. all of that. Yes. I went to a Catholic school. As did uh, I. As did you. As did most people in this country. Yes. I, I, I suppose. And I never really heard in my whole grade school and high school and even college life the idea of atheism. Nah. How, no. how fascinating is that? I mean, it's, it's now like one of the biggest groups in the U.S., like 10, 15 percent even, like bigger than the Jewish community there. Of course, all over the Internet, in, in most countries, even in Muslim countries, there are many atheist communities. But for eight years, oh wait, six plus four, ten, yeah. right? ten years of my life, I didn't have grade seven, I never heard of the idea of non-belief. And whenever... Uh, I've heard it misrepresented occasionally. Uh, well, yeah, yes. yeah, it's always misrepresented, yes. but there's yeah. a name is not even put to no, it. No, no. Like it's just... Allusion so, to it, non-belief. Yeah. yeah. But to me, I, I am not exaggerating when I say it didn't even go that far. Wow. Okay. So what's described to me is people who have doubts, who have super, super strong, extreme doubts, but never someone who's lost faith. Wow. Because someone is always just very doubtful, right? But they're not atheists. I mean, there's still hope for them. 
And what do you do when you're very doubtful? You, you pray. don't question. You pray, you pray. And the special Catholic move to fight this atheist scourge is retreats. You go yes. on religious retreats. Yes. And you're made to cry because you're shown this Jesus statue yeah. without arms. You and, feel very uh, guilty for questioning. Yeah, it's your sins that cut off his arms. Yes. Right? It's like when you use your hands to do bad things, it's like you're using Jesus' hands and his arms are... I mean, I remember and I think I cried in, in the, when this scene was you know, so carefully set up. They, they put in the, the, the statue. I think there's a cover still. Yeah. It's very dark, candles all around. There's music, sad yeah. music. Yeah. And then they make you feel so guilty for not believing. Why don't you just believe? It's so easy. And not only are you becoming closer to God, you're letting Jesus keep his arms. I mean, why would you take away Jesus' yeah. arms? And so that, go that's back one to believing, thing, right? right? And you go back to believing. Guilty to believing again. Yeah. So how, how do we fix this? <laughs> A lot of people have asked the free thinkers. It's one of very common question when someone first discovers our group. Okay, so what are the good secular schools? You know, what are yeah. what what's the best option for me? Is it homeschooling? I don't know. What do you think? I feel like we should just hold our academic institutions to high academic standards. Because the the, the filters are already there, right? Uh, if they make certain claims about gender roles. If they make certain claims about specific relationships being inferior to other relationships, mm. just call them out on it using the academic standards we already have, yeah. which will make it harder for them to justify. I mean, the other thing is, and this is where I'm not as hardline, is I do think, I mean, I recognize that people have a right to practice their religion. I understand yeah. that there might need to be space for that in some education systems. Yeah. I wish it wasn't as coercive as it is now, where you have no choice, essentially. Mm. But there are certain facets of Catholicism that I would rather were emphasized instead. Mm. So Catholic social teachings are quite progressive in terms of how they look at the poor, right? Preferential yes. option for the poor, the understanding of labor and capital, emphasis on social justice, the role yeah. of the state, our complicity in sinful structures. Yeah. Um, and in some Catholic schools, there is some airtime for this. Right? So, I mean, focus on those things. Stop fixating on why homosexuals are inferior, inherently disordered, which is a direct quote from a theology textbook. Like, <laughs> you know, my, my issue with that is these are values that you can teach uh, yeah. outside Agreed. of the context yes. of the Catholic I agree. doctrine. I agree. And if you're the kind of person to, to think, to use the context, to teach all of those things, you're probably the kind of person who adheres to the bad parts and of Catholic teaching And you reinforce well. and reproduce the entire yeah. basket of yeah. bad things. I mean, I understand that. Yeah. I guess it's <laughs> I mean, I guess I'm just trying to pick my battles, you know? <laughs> There's really no way to fight it. I, do, yeah. I don't see a, a good way of fighting it. Because you already mentioned the issue of religious freedom. Yeah, Like exactly. somebody in their classroom is saying these things, and then you tell them not to say these things. The first thing that the people who know about religious freedom will throw at you is you're violating their exactly. the freedom, exactly. not even the religious freedom, academic freedom. Teachers should be able to teach. And this, I think, is the arena that we yeah. should fight in. Yeah, exactly, on academic terms. The progressive teachers yes. who want to teach non-Catholic approved ideas in schools, they should be empowered to do that. Agreed. If yes. they want to emphasize natural evolution, you know, Darwinian evolution, not guided evolution, because let's get something clear. Like for, for the people in the audience who do not know. Because this is, this is still, even now. Yeah. I first encountered this when I was five years old. So that okay. was a long, long time ago. I was at the table. I told my parents, oh, did you know about evolution? You know, the story about the seven-day creation of the world is not really factual. Mm -hmm. Like it's very symbolic. And they, I was actually punished for that. I was, I don't know, spanked or berated for that. It's my teacher, it's my religious teacher who taught me that. And then it took me a while to convince them that that was true, right? Because Catholics are supposed to believe in evolution, right? A lot of people do not know this. It's, it's church approved. The Pope himself, several popes have said they believe in evolution, but not scientific, Darwinian, yeah. natural evolution. What they believe in is a guided evolution. Yeah, some weird intelligent design type concept. It's, it's kind of like... Evolution is based on randomness. Yeah. You know, 
mu random mutations over a very long, very long time, you know, and eventually we have this, you know, survival of the most adaptable. Yes. Right? But for them, no, it was all in the plan. Of course. It was all in the plan. Everything was, everything was uh, predetermined yeah. by God. There's no randomness there. And when two, like, humans, right, of all of, all of the, the bunch, to manage to be infused with special souls. You know, that's the official teaching of the Catholic Church. It's not Darwinian. So, it's so they just like, hijacked the scientific theory, co-opted yeah. it, yeah, tried yeah. to sound more scientific, but really sold the same crap. Some science teacher who wants to teach the, yeah. the purely scientific uh, version of yeah. evolution would, I think, uh, get some backlash from parents who are very religious. Why are you teaching my kid? this satanic, satanic garbage. Mm. Our job as activists, as advocates, is to defend this person. Yes. But I, I've Thank heard you. nothing <laughs> so far of such a case. And yeah. I think we, we have to, to make that environment. I mean, defend this person, yeah. defend this, this, this dissenter, but also call out the others call and out the hold others. them to higher standards. So ask them to explain and justify why those things are acceptable in an academic context. Yeah. It's kind of easier to do on social media as yeah. well. I yes. remember several screenshots uh -huh. or photos of textbooks yeah. where they kind of compare cer certain things. You know, plants uh -huh. are least loved by God. You know, yes. human beings are more loved, but a blessed Catholic human being, Christian human being, the baptized one, of is the, the most loved. So there's a hierarchy there. And that, that, as I said, it's really bad for free thinkers. We're, be, we're subtly being shoved to the margins. You know, these are less than... We're subhuman. They're subhuman, <laughs> but above plants. Yay. So, yeah, thanks, Can't Catholic eat us, school. But... <laughs> we're above plants. Um, I mean, exactly. Like, I special feel, Pokemon. I feel like it's easier to... To identify these things now and yeah. like call them out, put them online, create yeah. an evidence base of how this is a problem and therefore needs a more systematic solution. I don't think we should create an evidence base. Like talk to students of these universities, yeah. look at the texts that they're reading. People like you should go to these schools, do surveys, and see, yeah. the, see and compare the difference of Catholic schools, Catholic indoctrination versus public school indoctrination. Yeah. Because I suspect it won't be that different. I don't think Unfortunately it, it won't, would yes. be that different. You know, the, I, I also don't want to <laughs> idealize public schools in the Philippines. Yeah. Because the religious influence is still very, very strong. Yeah, yeah. But, you know, that being said, Catholic schools is still the bar. Ah, yeah. And changes that are done there will ripple to all of the other institutions. I mean, and yes. And apart from just it being intellectually dishonest and yeah. therefore, like, produces... I mean, let's face it. These Catholic universities... They reproduce the re ruling elite of our country to some they extent, do. right? They do. So apart from just producing, the risk of them producing citizens with like weird, iffy values, mm. at a younger age, I genuinely think some of these forms of perversions are like child abuse. Yeah. If there is a oh, yeah. gay kid and this child is repeatedly told that they are disordered yeah. and not loved by God, yeah. that's like psychological torture for the child, right? Yeah. Actually, like you don't have to go as far as ah. um, as gay kids or LGBT kids. Just yeah. ev every kid who's interested in sexuality, sure, particularly that masturbation. That too, yes, yes. Right? <laughs> masturbation is a sin, you know. I know, I do. And you go to hell. Oh, sin, bad, selfish, arrogant. Yeah, makes you incapable of functional, intimate relationships in the future. Oh yeah, yeah. But Apparently. you'll do it anyway, and the torture. The and you've internalized there. the shame and the guilt, right? Yeah, exactly. And that ripples out to everything else about sexuality. There is a right? gender gap in masturbation, by the way. Oh. One female for every five males. And I feel like because women are slut shamed more and like regularly told to feel more ashamed of desiring yeah. sex or asserting their sexuality. So it manifests in these unnecessary but like yeah. harmful ways. Yeah, I think that alone mm. like merits this change that we are trying yeah. to to start. Yep. You know, yes. people, kids afraid of being tortured in hell is a serious problem. It's a yes. serious problem. Like, if there's, the, if there's a person, right, who, if there's an adult who you tell kid, who's telling a kid, like, if you do a certain thing, like, someone will torture and burn you, that person can go to jail. 
That yeah, person can go exactly. to jail, except if, if he's doing it in the religious yes. context. Otherwise, it's racketeering. Otherwise, it's sorcery. Yeah. But if you have a religious justification for it, apparently it's all right to scare kids that way. To torture kids. Let's, yes. let's call it torture. I think it is psychological torture. I, I think torture. by the UN definition of torture, it is torture. I mean, I think if yeah. we are, if, if, I mean, Catholic institutions are so persuaded of the reality and imagery of hell, yeah. then they're going to have to accept that it's going to have a massive influence on how kids think, plus the inherent power imbalance, right? You don't question your teachers at a young age. They are, yeah. that's gospel truth. Yeah. That's, that's one and, more thing, Yes, I think. That's one more thing I'd like to point out on a very uh, high, you know, from, a, from an ego's eye view. The idea that what kids are supposed to learn in schools is not brute facts. It's not, yeah. a, it's not learning memorization. Like yes. anyone can learn memorization. Ideally, I think ideally for, for us, it's how to think. Critical thinking. It's critical thinking. Yeah. It's how to think and not specifically what to think yes. but the way that that catholic schools especially the way religion is taught is more memorization than learning how to reason learning how to how to think or if you ask questions then there are then no clear answers you are yeah. the default answer is faith yeah yeah so imagine that like just of course there are people who can compartmentalize i mean yeah. there are of course, of course religious yeah. scientists there are uh, religious doctors it's really very fascinating how yes. people can compartmentalize stuff but that being said i think it's like on uh, all things equal a, a person who has this very indoctrinated faith-based mindset will tend to be less rational in other areas of their life i think you know that that kind of it's hard to isolate so i don't know if i can really just, prove that but i would argue yeah. that it is at least a risk because yeah. like if yeah. you were there to learn, you would have picked these things up and learned these dangerous things, right? Yeah. yeah. So I guess where I stand is my ideal world is we we just teach these things on neutral secular ground because mm. we can teach empathy, yeah. public service, charity, yeah. all of these things. Value education. Justice. Exactly. Right? Without religious attachment, without the baggage yeah. that it brings. Assuming I can't get that world, <laughs> then I would rather a world where in religious institutions what's emphasized instead is more themes of social justice, yeah. like poverty, uh, structural inequality, okay. but, but also that poverty is understood in a gender fair way because there might be like the way with men and women and gay people experience yeah. poverty is very, very different and that's where they kind of fall short, right? Yeah. Yeah. So I would like to push that envelope a bit, but focus on things that might add value. So, in short, you want the Pope Francis of the public relations of the media, you know, the, the stuff that he does, uh, and not the Pope Francis who goes to the, the, the UN or sends people to the UN and blocks all of the anti-poor, anti-women initiatives yes. there. So, the, yes. the good, the good is, Pope. This is a fair summary. Okay. Thank you everyone for watching this episode. And if you want to discuss this, we will have a meetup. Details on that on our website. Please like, share, subscribe. On behalf of Shamila, Gary, Tin, Frank, uh, Max Pepper, the analyst desk, and millions of staff. See you next week.